it's New Tie Wednesday on this CBSN Minnesota Morning Update. I'm wearing a new tie. When's the last time you guys have put on a tie? Exactly. Not me. Pandemic not going to keep this neck game. Is that what we... I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, look, the control room's over it already. <laughs> Is that how this is going to go today? You guys just push whatever button you want. They're like, we don't care. Here's the weather. It's going to be a mild day today, 32. Great day for an orange striped tie. Then the bottom starts falling out tomorrow. We'll get some snow tomorrow. That'll be fun. And then, oof, super cold. Super cold is what it should be, right? This is Minnesota, the bold north. Yeah, and the cold north. But if it here's the thing, guys, right? Am I right on this? You can put you can put me back now. If it's not cold, uh, we lose our way of life. It's supposed to be cold up here, so uh, it's going to be over the next four days or so. Let's talk about this. I found this very interesting. A new report from the Minneapolis Fed says the pandemic has been pushing mothers out of the workforce and they are not coming back. The report says many mothers of kids under the age of five have quit working for good. Many issues is very complicated, but access to child care is a big part of the issue and the cost of it. There were COVID fears as well. Many families not wanting to send their kids to child care because of the risk of uh, COVID and uh, the threat for their family. But think of what's going on in families' lives right now. Taking care of their young kids, teaching as they're doing distance learning, working from home, it's just a lot. It's a lot. And the Fed is concerned about the long-term effects of women and mothers leaving the workforce because we all know it's way harder to find a new job, certainly at the same pay, than it is to keep your existing job. So we thought we would check in this morning on you. How, how are you? How burned out are you? How are you managing this? Uh, you, you're doing great. Everyone's doing their best. Everyone's doing great, I think. And the kids are going to be fine, but the stress is real. And so maybe you have tips or ideas. We want to hear from you. Facebook, the WCCO TV Facebook page is the place for it. And we'll read through a few of those comments in a moment. I will tell you, I'm very grateful that my kids are a little older, that they are 15 and 13, and they're able to do distance learning on their own. Uh, all of you parents of kids who are like fourth grade and under, you have my respect. Like you are going through something that no generation has ever gone through before. So don't be so hard on yourself. Um, but the threat to our workplaces is real. We need you guys in the workplace. You make every company better. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's just a fact. All right, let's talk about this crackdown on carjackings in the Twin Cities, because as far as quality of life goes, I think the carjacking threat is the number one thing that really has people on edge. We talk about violent, violent crime, and that's a concern, uh, but we're seeing cars just being jacked in the middle of the day. Uh, they arrested nearly 50 people over a three-day targeted sweep last week. There were helicopters flying around in South Minneapolis, all part of this sting. They recovered a dozen stolen vehicles, 15 firearms. It's really South Minneapolis that's been hit so hard. A teacher who lives there says crime has gotten out of control, so he feels safer learning of the wave of arrests. If we have to have helicopters flying over our neighborhoods to get it done, then, we have to, then that's just where we're at, and we have to do that. St. Paul police made arrests in two carjacking cases this week. They've recently worked with other agencies, including the ATF, to arrest six young men for a carjacking spree. So good they're making some progress there. Uh, but along that uh, vein, we did have a car theft, a van theft, a Minneapolis restaurant that is asking for help getting its delivery van back. back. So if you see a van that says FEMA's Minneapolis, F-H-I-M-A, apostrophe s that's the restaurant they posted these pictures on facebook and instagram saying you know somebody's got to see this van it was stolen monday night uh the restaurant uses that for catering but they've been using it during the pandemic as they've provided thousands of free fresh meals to people in need so that makes this even worse right if you've seen this van over the past couple of days 
or you see it soon. It's a Dodge Ram type van. Call police. A Sauk Rapids woman caught this on her doorbell camera. A man trying to break into her home while her family was asleep. This is one of the things that I think people are absolutely horrified and afraid of happening. The woman says it was close to one in the morning when she heard this. My gosh, you hear that sound, you check your ring, doorbell camera, and there's a guy trying to kick your door in. Oof. First he tried to open the door, a reminder to make sure your doors are locked, right? He was unable to do that, and then he walks away. He gives up eventually. Homeowner says at some point the man did rummage through their truck. I don't know if you can see it in the driveway out there, but there is a truck out there. Didn't take anything, nothing really to take, but ca call the police in Sauk Rapids. Uh, this is a very high quality video, so I'm sure somebody out there will recognize this man. Federal government is trying to ramp up the COVID-19 vaccination efforts. Uh, you know, so many of us want the vaccine in this rollout. You know, I think we'll look back and learn ways that it could have been better. I think maybe they were too like, sometimes I think they get too cute with this stuff. And next week they're saying, let's just get it to pharmacies all over the country. A million doses are gonna be released to 6,500 pharmacies. So the idea is, you know, they have some of these centralized clinics, but there are communities, underserved communities especially, that need access to the vaccines. And they have these pharmacies in their neighborhood. So good news to have that happening. Officials in Minnesota also want to put you on alert about COVID-19 vaccine scams. I tell you, whenever there's uh, something hopeful, you've got scammers ready to jump. Uh, red flags that you should watch out for for the Minnesota Department of Health. If, if someone offers to sell you a vaccine, that's BS. It's fake. They're free through approved providers. Uh, if someone says, hey, you want to jump to the front of the line, you can pay and we'll move you up. Nope, that's a scam. If someone says we're going to mail it to you or ship it to you, nope. You can't self-administer the vaccine. Everyone will get it from a professional, so be careful for that kind of stuff. Uh, what an exciting finish to a northern Minnesota tradition, and we love uh, this story. Aaron Letzring, a Duluth native who moved to Alaska, came back to northern Minnesota to do the John Bear Gree Sled Dog Marathon, and she won it by just seven seconds. She is the first woman to win the Bear Grease in more than 20 years. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty neat to be able to change that and get a woman back on top of the scoreboard here. I think that's right. It is pretty cool. Let's ring. Uh, first time taking part in this 300 mile race. Two days, nine hours, 24 minutes. Uh, so cool. Congratulations to her. SpaceX, they're testing this prototype uh, Starship S. N9 rocket, that is not what you want, right? Boy, sometimes that's how I feel this uh, news update goes sometimes. Takes off well, and this thing took off fine. You see the rocket flying, launched successfully, but then the landing, whoops. Sometimes, you know what? I mean, who among us hasn't been there? You're just not slowing your roll enough, and kabloom. Uh, nobody was on board. This is the rocket, though. The company hopes will carry the first humans to Mars. This is why you test these things. Uh, that's part of the process. The failure is where the success often comes from. Uber just bought a company that specializes in alcohol delivery. Sort of makes sense, right? Uber is about delivering people, you know, from a house to, uh, you know, airports to houses, business districts to houses. You may have heard of Drizzly. Uh, Drizzly works here in Minnesota. The people who came up with the idea of Drizzly, which is you order through a liquor store and then somebody comes, picks it up and brings it to your house. Uh, kudos to them because they just sold Drizzly for one billion dollars. Uber's biggest deal since buying Postmates, which is a food delivery app in July. So Uber just wants to deliver everything. Drizzly will appear on the Uber food delivery app, Uber Eats, as well as Drizzly will still be around, Drizzly operating in several states, including Minnesota. Golden Globes nominations come out this morning. Are they out yet? The show is uh, gonna have Tina Fey. It's happening right now. Oh, the, can't wait to see what sort of movies the 14 people as part of the Hollywood Foreign Press have nominated for the Golden Globes Awards. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are gonna be back to host. So that'll be fun. They'll be uh, on separate coasts, though. Tina in New York, Amy in Beverly Hills. 
the Globes take place. It'll be a virtual award show. Yay. February 28th. So, there you go. Gonna be weird, like, what movies? Not too many movies came out over the last year. Plenty of TV shows, though, so lots of, I'm sure, here are 47 nominations to Netflix and some other streaming stuff that none of us have ever heard because we're just watching Young Sheldon and NCIS. Let's talk about uh, stress. How are you doing? Pandemic fatigue, learning that more women leaving the workforce for good. Lindsay says it's very mentally exhausting when elementary age kids are home distance learning. Parents are working from home full time. However, when the kids go back, it's a huge weight. You still worry. Yeah, Lindsay, you do worry, right? But it is a huge weight lifted off your shoulders. Thanks for your comment. We're cheering for you. Pam says it was rough at first, wondering how things would be. I feel for those young families. I don't think I would have been able to take time off of work. So Pam, echoing my thoughts, glad that the kids are older. Thank you, Pam. Annette, feeling super burned out. I want life to get back to normal. I'm depressed and really need my life back. Annette, I hear you. I'm, you know, Annette, I'm just, I'm so sorry. Like this whole thing is just, it's so out of our control and that is so rough uh, for so many of us. Simon, I'm feeling like I'm over this, but we must push on. Indeed, we must. Thank you, Simon. Amanda, lately I'm definitely feeling more anxious and stressed about it. Yeah, I think that's like part of the deal with this vaccine rollout, right? Logically, we know, like, they just came up with this vaccine. Like, it's not like they were just gonna flood the market with 100 million immediately delivered doses. Um, but it's that combination. And then hearing about variants and, oh, it's changing and we better get vaccinated before it changes and I can't get vaccinated. And it's all of that just kind of rolling up. Well, we, we feel for you. We honor where you're at. I know it's tough. I know it is. Uh, and your kids especially appreciate you uh, fighting through and being there for them because they're going to get through it. We all are. We appreciate you spending time with us here on the Morning Update. CBSN Minnesota. We'll be back here again tomorrow. little morning update of news and hopefully a little bit of an uplifting.